Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Here's a headline from the Daily Hoddle. Former SEC official says case against Ripple is not a slam dunk, here's why. And they're covering a write-up that I actually covered at some point last week. Um, so yeah, this came up the 25th, so I either covered it that day or the 26th, I'm guessing here. Um, I ran through this in great detail. And so this individual uh, used to work for the SEC. Um, he was a United States Securities and Exchange Commission executive. His name is Joseph Hall. Yeah, he's also a lawyer. And he happened to, on the same day, I don't know why Daily Huddle's reporting on this so late, uh, you know, because again, it's been out for like a week. So um, I, I am going to touch on it just to make sure I got the table properly set. But uh, there was a new interview with Joseph Hall in, uh, in which he said, uh, among other things, that if Ripple had done what the SEC is saying they should have done like seven years ago, that XRP would be useless. It wouldn't be worth a damn thing. It, you would have sucked all the utility out of it, which is an interesting point. And that's just one of a number of interesting points that this individual made. Again, Executive Joseph Hall, formerly with the SEC. And uh, he was interviewed. Uh, the interview just came out uh, today, actually, on uh, the, the Thinking Crypto YouTube channel. So it was over an hour long, and I watched it, and I took some notes as I was going through it. And I'm going to kind of summarize some of the points that I thought were the most important and interesting. And I'll tell you right now, before even getting into that portion of this video, I was, uh, not in a bad way, but I was a bit surprised, um, just really intrigued by some of the points that he had. So I'm really looking forward to running through this. Uh, now, I do want to be clear that I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I just enjoy talking about these types of topics because I'm an enthusiast and running this YouTube channel is my most favoritist hobby I've ever had, but that is indeed all that it is. So let's quickly uh, blaze through this article, just to make sure everybody's caught up to speed because, because and this thing, like I, I went through this in great detail. It's X number of pages, whatever, I don't know, three, four pages, whatever the hell it is. And um, and so I just want to again make sure the table's set here, but that whole write-up in and of itself was incredible. And it's just like his, and again, he's come from the SEC, he's like his brain explode just trying to understand in what world does it make sense to out of the blue start going after Ripple after all these years. So check this out. Uh, former U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission executive Joseph Hall says the regulatory body's lawsuit against Ripple highlights the overall need for clarity in the crypto asset industry. In a new opinion piece, the former SEC executive says the regulatory status of most crypto assets remains in a gray area that's hampering the growth of the wider blockchain space in the United States. Uh, Hall further warns that using existing laws based on pr principles that date back to three quarters of a century ago to regulate crypto assets is counterproductive, which, if I could just say, I've been sharing that exact opinion for over two years on this 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 YouTube channel with a silly ass name, good old Moon Nambo. Uh, like you don't. Here's the thing, I I I don't have the legal background, so I don't know all the nuances of, of what to expect when this goes to trial. Assuming it does, I don't know what likely outcomes are outside of the insight that I get from lawyers that are willing to freely, openly talk about this stuff. But I am good at logic. I don't do bad logic, right? Okay, so like it's just common sense here. Uh, and I will flesh that concept out a little bit further in the video, but uh, it's just to shoehorn cryptocurrencies in this archaic regulatory framework just doesn't make any sense, you know? And even he said in the interview, too, he's like, yeah, uh, you know, what do you say? Round peg and square hole? <laughs> and it doesn't fit, man. But here's a quote. The movement of securities occurs within a framework designed to protect the investing public in which intermediaries who facilitate trading in securities or hold them for others are subject to pervasive SEC oversight. This framework was not built to govern simple commercial activities like a purchase of services. Shoehorning these activities into the securities regulatory apparatus would increase their cost and complexity to the point of being useless or at the very least, uncompetitive with existing alternatives. Now, um, as for the strength of the SEC's case, Hall believes the regulatory body had much better options than to go after Ripple. And here's a quote. Why on earth did the agency bring a case that was considerably less a slam dunk than its previous crypto enforcement actions? Barring a settlement, the Article III courts and the SEC will ultimately say whether XRP is a security. 
There are plenty of digital assets with more tenuous use cases than XRP, any one of which might have better helped the SEC etch its views into federal case law before taking on a leviathan like Ripple Labs. <clears throat> a loss on the merits in the XRP litigation could epically damage the SEC's regulatory project uh, when it comes to digital assets. <clears throat> and so, on to what he said in this most recent interview on the Thinking Crypto channel, which Tony runs. Uh, you know, he, he flat out stated, and well, I'm about to go into great detail here, but he stated that he's just not convinced that the SEC is going to be able to win this thing. He's really not. And I have to tell you, even without having the, the insights that he has on the surface of it, just the fact that they're not uh, requesting a declaratory judgment of XRP being declared a security, that tells you that they're not convinced that what they're saying is actually legitimately the case. And then uh, Ripple on the flip side, they could have just let it go and then hoped for a settlement. And they're saying, no, we want this to be litigated to conclusion. That they are officially, and I've covered that in detail in a couple videos recently, so I won't go deeper than that. But uh, other than say that uh, they're going, if, once this is adjudicated, if there is indeed no settlement, and the settlement's looking less likely at this, likely at this point, we will have regulatory clarity on XRP. We might not if there's a settlement, but if this actually goes to court, we're going to have regulatory clarity whether it's good news or bad news. And so check this out. Uh, in the interview now that uh, just, again, launched today, uh, he stated that if, if Ripple had successfully registered XRP as a security, so just imagine back in the day, uh, say it's 2013, 2014, pick your early days here, right? It effectively would have lost its utility and become useless because it couldn't legally be traded peer-to-peer -peer because there is no existing regulation to cover such a situation. Bitcoin and stable coins clearly are not securities, he said, for example, so th those would live. Bitcoin would, would, would persist. But uh, XRP, it, it, it had they, and look, clearly Ripple doesn't believe for a moment XRP is a security, and there wasn't sufficient, uh, or, um, sufficient regulatory framework back then either, so I don't know why they would have done this, especially when they were being transparent and open about they, what they were doing. Like, they weren't being shady, they weren't being fraudulent, there are no fraud charges against Ripple. And, but had they gone th that route which they couldn't have known the SEC would want them to do seven or eight years later. Had they done that, it would have killed the company. It would have killed the utility of XRP if it were granted. And the, the SEC is saying, you should have done that. What the hell is that? This is it's freaking gross. And I hadn't heard it pointed out quite like that by anyone. But yeah, you'd be talking about XRP, uh, you know, from his perspective anyway, just becoming effectively useless, right? I um, mean, he says it would be better to label XRP and similar cryptocurrencies. And this is where it gets real interesting. I was kind of surprised. I was like, when he said the first sentence, I was like, what? But then I was like, okay, I'll hear you out. He says it would be better to label XRP and similar cryptocurrencies as a security, but then regulate it in a way that would not destroy its utility. And, um, you know, because look, the United States does not have a utility token classification. You know, like, for instance, the, the UK does. The Financial Conduct Authority over there, they stated, you know, XRP is a utility token. But he thinks that would be a good approach. You know, have a payments token, a securities token, you know, a utility token, etc. But not to the point where, like, because a security, a people, he's, he kept pointing out that people are just getting hung up on this term. But what if we just say, okay, yes, it's technically a security, but that doesn't mean that people shouldn't be able to transmit it peer to peer. Because, and the reason that he was going this route, and it's because of his tremendous uh, background with the SEC and law background, and, and he doesn't think this would happen anytime soon, if ever, but the, the really the reason that he was pushing for that is he doesn't think that the SEC is ever going to be in a position where they're going to be able to provide sufficient regulatory clarity over all of these coins, like in one false swoop. And I, I've heard comments along those lines in the past. And so, again, doesn't seem like that's necessarily what's going to happen here, but he has concerns about this. And you know what his concerns are? And this is also additionally interesting, which is why it's, it's so nice. Anytime you can get somebody that is uh, this well-informed, I mean, because this is what he does for a living, right? And to get this type of insight specifically about Ripple and XRP and the SEC, this whole case going on, anytime you get insight like this, it's it's really, it can be really eye-opening. So he, here's here's his concern. Uh, you know, if Ripple wins this case against the SEC, which he thinks is certainly in, in the cards, he's not—he's clearly not convinced the SEC will win, you know, it could be the case that crypto assets as a result of such would be under-regulated as the SEC would lose power. 
Now, on the flip side, though, if the SEC wins and XRP ends up being declared a security, and again, it's Ripple that's requesting the clarity. The SEC didn't want it, but now it's going to come no matter what, unless there's a settlement anyway. But if the SEC wins, then uh, XRP and crypto would be regulated to death. And that's a quote from him. He said it would be XRP and other cryptos regulated to death. And so why, do you, why does it have to be one extreme or the other? And so that's why from his perspective, he was stating, look, if you just get over this technical hurdle or, you know, the uh, maybe technical is not even right. The word perceived hurdle of just like the, the word security. If you can get over that and say, OK, whatever, but here's how you regulate it so that you don't kill them. And like, I don't care if, like, if that ever happened. I don't care if it's called a security and it technically is and every other altcoin is even. Not that literally every other altcoin would be, but I wouldn't care as long as that doesn't affect the utility. And as long as it doesn't take away Ripple's ability to sell XRP, which they rightfully own, th those types of things. So if it really is just a game of semantics, okay, I can get on board with that. I'm not sure, though. And again, it doesn't seem like that's a likely outcome. He's just saying from his perspective, perspective what makes the most logical sense. And um, he said it would be better for Congress to come in and uh, make it clear which entities in the federal government have the legal ability to rule over crypto. Because otherwise, you'll continue to have a situation where various departments, um, you know, they assert authority, uh, which is at odds against other departments. You can absolutely, and we've seen this, you can have, uh, you know, regulation coming from two different departments within the fed on a federal level from the United States that makes it impossible to comply with both. And so, you know, a way to, to go about this is perhaps, you know, not that this is going to happen anytime soon either, but this would perhaps fix the problem too. Congress can come in and say which, uh, which parts of the United States federal government, which departments, you know, can assert authority over XRP and the cryptocurrency asset class. That would make things a little bit more simple. And, and, and it could be more than just one department, and then there could be other stipulations, and maybe even that would be fine. But right now you've got like a, a, so many different departments, uh, you know, trying to just rule over this. It's like a, a power grab, effectively. And it doesn't really work. It's messy. And so at some point, the SEC needs to approach crypto as a regulatory project instead of playing, and this is a quote from, from uh, Mr. Hall, he said, instead of playing whack-a-mole, going after random targets while ignoring the bigger issue. Well said here. And so it's a hell of a ride here. And I, I'll tell you what, from my perspective, and uh, I'm biased as an XRP holder, fine. I would rather at this point have the, if it has to be one or the other, if it actually has to, like if there's going to be no settlement, I'd rather have crypto. And this is my biased position. I'd rather have it be underregulated than overregulated because he says, this is his opinion, XRP would be regulated to death. That sounds worse to me than, than, than underregulating and than finding a path forward. I, I just, I'm, I'm just saying here, but killing XRP and har doing harm uh, to just an untold number of individuals, financial harm, uh, by, by going after Ripple in this fashion after eight freaking years, that seems like a, a, a worse p um, proposition than uh, under-regulating and then finding some sort of path forward moving, you know, just directionally heading forward in the future. Because look, even if it undermines the SEC's power, Congress still has an ability uh, to shape directionally where things go. So it, it wouldn't have to be a forever type thing. I just don't want to see XRP die. It, I don't think it will. It just wouldn't make any logical sense. It wouldn't be rational in the least. And like I keep saying, it's it's very difficult because it, like, he said this too. Let me make this point before wrapping up here. He was talking about this idea of cryptocurrencies going from centralized to decentralized and vice versa. And he says, look, you know, he, he could have understood the position of the SEC more if they were stating that in the past, X number of years ago, whether it was like 2014, that XRP was a security back then, he said it wouldn't be been effectively such a hard pill to swallow. But to argue that XRP today is a security, in his, his estimation, that's just too far. It just, it clearly today isn't. And now in your this position where it's a winner-take-all situation, which attorney Jeremy Hogan has been saying, and I've been highlighting his opinion on this channel as well. And it seems to me that Joseph Hall has a, 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 the same or similar opinion on that. It's, it's effectively a winner-take-all situation not desirable, but the, the SEC started it and then they kind of forced Ripple's hand in. This is the way that it's going. So we'll just have to watch how it all unfolds. But I'm still definitely big picture optimistic, but you never know if bad law is going to get passed. So we're just going to have to sit tight. All right, I'll wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time. 
to the moon, Lambo.